Well, this is such a wonderful time to celebrate the festival of Sukkot, which is also known as the Feast of the Ingathering or the Feast of Booths, which is the word we get in Hebrew, singular, Sukkah, a shelter, a hut-type dwelling, or Sukkot in the plural. And so I'd like to open up by reading to you the scripture reference in Leviticus chapter 23, where it says, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year, and it shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month, which is the month of Tishri. You shall dwell in booths, or Sukkot, for seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths. As you see, we are native Israelites, Israelis, right here, celebrating it in our booth. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And so that's a significant scripture reference. And it says that these are the feasts of the Lord. In other words, the various feasts throughout the biblical cycle of the Hebrew calendar are feasts that you and I both, as Jew and Gentile, one and Messiah, have the right and the privilege to celebrate together. So what is the essence of Sukkot? First of all, it's the celebration of the gathering of the harvest. This is the fall harvest. Also, it commemorates the miraculous protection God provided for the children of Israel when they left Egypt. And of course, they were protected by dwelling in temporary housing in the desert. And so, we also call the Feast of the Ingathering Chag Ha'asif. That means to collect, La'asof, to collect, like the name Joseph from Egypt, which means to gather, to collect. Now, how do we celebrate it in Hebrew tradition? Well, first of all, I'd like to share a few things that we do celebrate. We celebrate it between the 15th to the 22nd of the Hebrew month called Tishri. Second of all, we dwell in booths or shelters known as Sukkot, in the, as I said, in the plural form of the word. We oftentimes, traditionally, Jewish people will add four elements inside called the four kinds or arba minim, which are four types of special vegetation. Fourth, we traditionally also, as Jewish families, eat all our meals in this sukkah dwelling. That could be breakfast, that could be brunch, that could be lunch, that could be dinner, or that could be a late night snack. That's the joy. And another thing is that many Jewish people will dwell and literally sleep out and rest all day and sleep overnight in the booth. That is if you don't have too many mosquitoes biting at you. But we go on to say, in celebrating this time, we decorate the Sukkot or the Sukkah with all sorts of creative designs and ornaments. Now, it's wonderful because I know many Christians who celebrate or commemorate Christmas in the birth of the Messiah Yeshua, although I believe it was more at this time of the year, certainly than the winter, but they go to stores and they buy all these ornaments. Well, as Jewish people in Israel, we go into the shuk or into the open market and we buy all sorts of ornaments to make this such a special time. And that's how we have decorated our own sukkah. And every year it's a little bit different. So this is a wonderful way to enjoy and to feast together. And then finally, while the Torah, the first five books of Moses, as they are called, state Sukkot is a seven-day holiday or event, and we also celebrate an eighth day called Shmini Atzeret, which is referred to in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 36. But then again, we have something more special than all of that because at the very end of the Sukkot celebration, we have a further holiday celebration called Simchat Torah, which was added to the year-long cycle of reading the Torah throughout the year. And wow, you should just see in the old city of Jerusalem, when all the yeshiva students come to the Western Wall or the Kotel and thousands of other people to celebrate. Then, to sum it all up, 
we celebrate all these activities for eight days, but even in the diaspora, many Jewish people celebrate it for nine days. So during the first and last days of Sukkot, it's like a Shabbat when people are to cease from all their labors, and that's referred to in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 39. During the rest of the days in Israel, it's known as Chol Moed, and so most Israelis are working half days. To sum it all up, what I'd like to say is so special about this time, and to be able to share with all of you, we are commanded by God Himself to rejoice during the Feast of Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles, and for God's very own provision in our lives. And summing it all up, in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 13 to 15, it says these words, You shall observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days, when you have gathered from your threshing floor and from your winepress, and you shall rejoice in your feast. Amen? Amen. You and your son and your daughter, your male servant and your female servant, and the Levite. And by the way, we are Levites. The stranger and the fatherless and the widow who were within your gates. Seven days you shall keep a sacred feast to the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hands, so that you shall surely rejoice. What's so important about this is to remember, at this time of the year, we are also to, supposed to give tzedakah, or to charitable purposes. And we invite you to do that through Vision for Israel and the work of the Joseph Storehouse, as we want to bless the poor and the needy in the land of Israel. The sukkah, or the palm branch shelter, symbolizes our dependence upon God's care and His love for each and every one of us. So, Chag Sameach, Barry. Chag Sameach. Where are we now? We're in our sukkah that you and I built with wow. a bit of help from our grandson, Boaz. <laughs> yes. And it's right here in Mivaseret Zion in the hills of Jerusalem. Barry, I want an, on, an honest answer. Uh, I, I was just so happy to see that you were building the sukkah this year. When was the last time you built the sukkah? That's like asking me, when's the last time I changed a baby's diaper? Yeah, that's probably more or less the same, yeah. So how long ago? Well, actually, I changed the diaper no, not I, too I have long a ago. I have <laughs> <laughs> that's of our grandson, probably. Yeah, that's the only one. Yeah. So uh, when was the last time you were building a sukkah here? Uh, I helped transport it here. <laughs> And help take it down and help decorate it. <laughs> okay, so I'll help your memory. I think we live here uh, in this neighborhood for more than 27 years now. Correct, yeah. And uh, I think that for the last 27 years, we were very busy uh, going from conference to conference um, in Jerusalem, right, Barry? Well, we hosted a conference called the Sukkot Celebration. For how many years? Um, 20 years. Yeah, and, and then before that, what did we do on Feast of Tabernacles? <laughs> Probably we always had sukkah, that's for sure. Uh, we were with your parents a lot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, occasionally we traveled. Not that much during Sukkot. But we were attending a lot of conferences that are happening in, in yes, Jerusalem. Yes, that's and, right. Yeah, and so I think, I think one of the main things that we've seen in modern Israel is to see a lot of groups coming to Israel from all the nations. And it was in fulfillment of prophecy, no? Yeah. Tens so. of thousands of Christians and Jewish people from all over the world came up to Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles, which it says in Scripture, it says that they shall gather together three times a year in the city of Jerusalem. And so one is for the Feast of Passover, the other is for Shavuot, and then for the Feast of Tabernacles. Yeah. For me as an Israeli, I think the, the greatest feast really out of all of them and the happiest one is, is the Feast of Sukkot, no? That's right. And that's what I wanted to ask you to share about what it means to celebrate the joy of the Lord during the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Sukkot. Yeah, it's very, very important that uh, we all know that this is a very uh, strange year for us here uh, as we are sharing uh, the Sukkot. We used to have a Sukkot celebration, 
but uh, really, this is like three, three holidays, three main holidays we have in this month, the month of Tishrei. So, Barry, what are the three holidays that we celebrate on the month of Tishrei in, in, the, in the biblical uh, feast? Terminology, yeah. the Feast of Trumpets, which yeah. we call the head of the Jewish New Year, which yeah. isn't the actual Jewish New Year, but that came through tradition. But it's the Feast of Trumpets, which is significant. And then we have the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. And then finally we arrive to the Fall Harvest, or the Feast of Sukkot, or the Feast of Booths, or the Feast of Tabernacles. Yeah. So, you know, for, for, each, for each holiday, we have an emphasis of something. So Rosh Hashanah is really like we're preparing after 40 days of fasting from the month of Elul to the month of Tishrei. Some people are fasting, some people are praying repentance, they go to the synagogues. And of course, we as believers are doing the same. We're searching our hearts, we're searching our souls, we're repenting before, before one another and before the Lord. And then we come into the day uh, of atonement, which is the, the day of where we are asking forgiveness and asking God to forgive us for all our sins. And as the old times, we had the, the high priest that was sacrificing sacrifices on, uh, on, on the day of atonement. And of course, our sacrifice is Yeshua. And now we're coming into um, a very, very special feast. And this is really connected to the joy, the joy that God wants to give us. And how do we come to that joy? That joy comes to us from the Lord himself. And and I wanted to actually talk about the joy of the Lord because it is our strength. In the month of Tishrei, when we start celebrating the Sukkot, it's seven days that we sit in the Sukkah in the dwelling, uh, we're actually remembering the, the, the biggest thing or the most important thing that God wants us to do in this holiday is to have the joy. And it says, It's a commandment from the Lord for us to rejoice in Him. Now, we all know that it has been a very challenging times to many, many people during this time, because this time we're, we're struggling with uh, so much in our life and so much is coming out uh, as a result of the circumstances around us. We have this plague, COVID-19, that nobody knew anything about this plague before. And so we're facing, as, as not just globally, all in all around the world, millions and millions and billions of people are suffering from the fact that there is an unseen pandemic, unseen virus that we don't, we've never seen it before. And now we have to struggle and change our lifestyles as a result. Many people are getting the disease and we're challenged with fear. We're challenged with doubt. We're challenged with so many things that are coming upon us that we are uh, challenged to rejoice in the Lord in this time and this season. How can we rejoice in the Lord when we are facing so much heaviness and so much hardship and, and so much worries? A lot of people are very worried. We're worried about our parents. We're worried about our children. We're worried about our brothers and sisters friends and we're worried about our jobs so many people are out of work there are in israel we have the highest rate ever in uh, in unemployment how do we face that how do we uh, make it so we know that the joy is something that uh, that will bring us happiness that will bring us actually uh, health will cause us to be healthy in the lord and i just wanted to to share with you uh, this verse from the book of Nehemiah that it says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I was meditating upon, upon the word joy and what joy means to me. And I wanted to ask you, because when, when you talk about joy, joy for you is maybe an emotion. One day you feel like you're joyful. One day you feel low. One day you feel like you're very worried about things. One day you feel like you're angry with people. But does this make the decision of your will different that you are l lacking uh, the joy of God in your life? No. I believe that I if we want the joy of the Lord, we need to meditate upon the, upon the Lord. There are like a few steps that we can do in our lives as believers to know that we can 
observe the joy of the Lord in our lives. A, by reading the Word of God. Make sure you read the Word of God every day. Eat it like it is your breakfast. Eat it for your lunch. Eat it for your, be hungry for the Word of God. Two, I believe you need to pray. You need to intercede. You need to always looking at other people that are having much less than what you have. Three, I think we need to be thankful. We need to be grateful. We need to be thanking the Lord for what He has given us because He has given us a lot of things that we can be grateful for. And one more thing is that we need to always ask ourselves, what can we do today and how we can be in a place where we can have the joy of the Lord in our, in our hearts. I wanted to say, our joy is not based on our emotions. Our joy is a commandment from the Lord. As it says in the Bible, I always talk about it, that the, in Hebrew we have so many words for joy. In Hebrew, you don't have just the word simcha, which is joy. You have sos, you have uh, gila, you have ditza, you have tzahala, you have so many other words. I can't think of all the words right now, but there's at least seven words that refer to um, happiness and joy of the Lord. And I just wanted to conclude by saying, when we humble ourselves before the Lord, when we obey His Word, it, it doesn't matter what the circumstances all around us. Don't look at yourself. Look at God. Focus on Him and be an answer today for those that don't have God in their lives. Be an answer for them so they can plant the joy. You, you can plant faith. You can plant hope. You can plant joy that brings you also health and being a healthy person is very important these days and that will be in another section when we speak about how God can give us uh, wisdom of how we can implement even good food and healthy lifestyle that can help us uh, observe and absorb uh, more joy of the Lord. So Barry, I just wanted to say uh, it, no matter what the circumstances are around us, we are so grateful a, that we can be here today and that we have people that are praying for us and people that we're praying for. And um, that thank God that we have faith in our Yeshua, the, the Hamashiach, that He saved us and He redeemed us and He brought us to this place. And uh, I rejoice that I can sa sit in this dwelling place and rejoice in the Lord. And you can also rejoice that your husband actually helped build it together with you. Yeah, after 27 years, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. And that's why scripture says, the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. Amen. Start the day right with God today. Enjoy some of the very best teaching from anointed speakers, exclusive daily content, and special access to an online community of believers. We're celebrating the launch of God today with a limited seven-day free trial. Sign up today and enjoy this offer, but hurry, it won't last long. Start your day right in the presence of God.